Share a song with you, loved ones, that the Lord, you know, touch my heart with that. Encourage me, pick me up, keep going. Because it can be a discouragement sometimes when you look around and it's just mayhem everywhere we go. But the Lord, He knows what He's doing. I cry tears of joy, hallelujah, because the Lord is moving by His Spirit. Hallelujah, I can get up and praise His wonderful name. I just want to share a song with you. Praise the Lord. I won't be my brother. I won't in one day. Try many positions. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A woman one day tried many positions, but they who works in the Bible were told. But when she had her hallelujah, she came to Jesus and she found what she needed. Everybody and so If I could do time That ever we started If I could do time One part of his clothes I know I'll be I could just touch 
Jesus Christ, we shall meet him in the air. Some of us here will never experience this day, but in the twinkling of an eye, as the Bible says, we shall be changed and meet the Lord in the air. Just imagine, brothers and sisters. No science can explain it. Not a single Bible college can explain it. It's for the children of God. My precious brothers and sisters, you know when we come in this fashion, we must believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is here. It's not me. It is he who 
said, when two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. We are not gathering here in the name of uh, any political group, no. It's because of that name of Jesus Christ. My precious brethren, it's not in vain. When, when we come by faith, I'm repeating myself, by faith, we must believe that Jesus Christ is somewhere here. Amen. And whatsoever you have, as my precious brother Bruce was mentioning, whatsoever situation that you are going through, you are full of God. I don't know a single child of God who has been forsaken by God. He's the one who said in Matthew chapter 11, come unto me. If he says come unto me, it's because he knows exactly our needs. And he's a God who fulfills what he has promised. I can promise you then thousand dollars tomorrow and then when tomorrow comes despite my good will I might tell you brother you know I want to make it with the good will yes I really want to give you that ten thousand dollars but tomorrow when it comes I say brother I don't have it forgive me but our God will never say forgive me when he says tomorrow is tomorrow when he told Abraham that you will have a son, I will visit you again next year. Your wife Sarah will have a son. And that when that time came, he didn't come to say sorry. Our God, you know when he says yeah, Ye means ye. When he opens, no one can close it. And when he closes, no one can open. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, that's why we are called believers. If we don't believe God, we make him a liar. my precious brothers and sisters. You know, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 4, I will be mentioning some scriptures, some I will be reading them. In uh, John chapter 4, if you have time at all, you can read from verse 6 up to 26. But, I would like us to read from verse 23, the Bible says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the two worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father, listen, seeketh such to worship him. We didn't come to worship a man, but to worship our creator, our heavenly father. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters. Verse 24, the Bible said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must it is not may, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Why the Bible is insisting in that word spirit and truth? Because many 
denominations today, they don't have the truth. They bring philosophy, theology, but when we read the Bible, what does the Bible say about theology, philosophy? That's of the devil. It's not me, it is written in the Bible. Listen, brothers and sisters, John chapter 8. The Bible says, from verse 31, why we must worship our God in spirit and truth. The Bible says, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if Ye continue in my words, not the words of any Bible school. If ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. That's not me. It's our Lord Jesus Christ speaking. And then he says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's why the devil is busy twisting the truth. By twisting the truth, he makes people prisoners. That's why we have a prison called Catholic Church. It is a cage where the devil is keeping people with the doctrines not from Jesus Christ but from the Roman. You know what? Sometimes I say that these people are very crazy. It is written Roman Catholic church it is a church that began in rome but the bible says the word of god should come from jerusalem it is a prison camp where the devil is keeping people in prison that's why you find another prison Call Jehovah Witness. You know, this is one of, uh, you know, sometimes when you look at them, they remove some scriptures from the Bible. Listen, brethren, if any Jehovah Witness comes to trouble you, take his Bible and ask him to read John chapter 3. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, it is written here. John chapter 3, verse 13. The second part of this scripture is removed. Because the Bible is saying, And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. They have removed the last part because they don't believe that Jesus is God. They say they are among the 144,000. But when you come in the Bible, the Bible is clear. Who are the 144,000? There is no one from Australia, according to the Bible. There is no one from Africa. There is no one from Europe. The Bible says 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000 from that tribe, all those 12 tribes are in Israel. Now, how come someone from Australia telling me I'm, I'm also one of the one, one forty-four thousand? Can you see how the devil is troubling people? And they are very serious. Some of them came to my house one day. You know, 
That was the biggest mistake that they made. <laughs> because they kept, I was listening to sermons. Let me say, yeah, we can see you are. I say, yes, yes. I'm listening to sermons, yes. No, no, you know. Then I say, okay, can you come and have a seat? I say, no, we can stand outside. Now, funny enough, the husband was in his car and sent the ladies. I said, okay, fine. Now I start showing them that Jesus Christ is the Jehovah of the Old Testament. I start showing them, you know, you know, then I let some of us to you know we just put scriptures, wait, because scriptures wait. And then you know what? The more I was revealing unto them who Jesus Christ was, they said, no, 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 okay, we shall come another day. I said, no, please, don't you are the one who came here. Can you call your husband? Say, no, my husband is not coming. <laughs> and then I told them, and my Lord Jesus Christ said, you will die in your sins if you don't believe that I am He. So today, there are many people having their Bibles. Very honest, sincere with what they are doing, but going straight to hell. Can you see the privilege that we have found? Sometimes I ask myself, who am I? To understand the scriptures as it is written. Listen, when you read carefully your Bible in Luke chapter 24, the Lord Jesus Christ was with his disciples. They were going to Emmaus. The Bible says toward the end of the scriptures, he opened their understanding. When God opens your understanding, the devil will not take it away from you. It becomes personal experience. And when you read that scripture carefully, they were saying, our hearts were touched when he was speaking. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, if you are a true child of God, when God speaks there, down there, you feel something making you joyful. Sometimes you can't explain it. Another person can see you crying. Say, but what's wrong with this man? Why is he crying? It's a personal experience. My precious brothers and sisters, as we were mentioning some few weeks ago, to some, the Lord will tell them, I never knew you. Let's tell you. You know, yes, because I was mentioning about John chapter 3, yes, I would like us to go carefully, John chapter 3 from verse 1. I know you know this scripture. But uh, I would like, by God's grace, to show you something. The Bible says from verse 1, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Listen to what Nicodemus was saying, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. The Pharisees are without excuse. Can you imagine? For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. 
But when you read throughout the Bible, the people who made our Lord's life difficult were Pharisees. But they knew who Jesus Christ was. Because one of them came to testify. Say, we know. No wonder the Lord will chase them and say, you workers of iniquity. Iniquity, it's when you know the truth and you just don't want to do it. So they are without excuse. Right now, righteous brothers and sisters, I beg you, as we were mentioning last Sunday, by the way, are you aware that uh, in Europe there was uh, a big meeting in more than 156 countries met? They were talking about the climate change, trying to see what they can do, you know, but they can do nothing. <laughs> The scriptures are there. We read with you scriptures last Sunday. Isaiah chapter 30. We read scriptures. When the Bible says the sun, S-U-N, will be the light which will be times seven. You know, when God starts something, no one can stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you may like it or not, no one can stop God's decision. He's gonna burn this earth. Now, unto his own children, there is a message calling all of us out of all confusion. Because God cannot burn us with the workers of iniquity. No. We are his children. Now, the message is as I always read, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 14 up to 18. The Bible says, Come out from their midst and touch not the unclean. And I will receive you. This is the message calling all of us out of all confusion. Because, brothers and sisters, God will not allow a single confusion to be taken there in heaven. Can you imagine? We shall be with the Lord up there forever. How can we take there a confused person? A confused person there will be confusion there forever. <laughs> That's why he can't allow a single confusion to be taken up there. Listen, brothers and sisters, even that name of our Lord Jesus Christ, unto us, it's everything. But to many, you know, I say, no, he was just a son. But for us, when we read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, we know who that son is supposed to be. The Bible calls him, when you read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he calls him, okay, let me read, let me read. I don't want that. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. To some, he's just a son, but unto us is everything. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Listen what the Bible says. For unto us, not for all, 
unto us. <laughs> you know, that's the mystery of God. Yeah? Yeah. Unto us, not all, unto us. A child is born. Unto us. <clears throat> a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called, listen, wonderful. Oh my. You know, when you meet that son, your life becomes wonderful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you know, sometimes I feel like jumping. You know, <laughs> listen, <laughs> counselor, yeah. the mighty God. Yeah. Listen, the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Amen. It was not only a son. It was the ever, you know, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You know, you will find it also. Yes. Oh my. You know, sometimes when they start talking about Jesus, huh, you can spend the whole day. Yes. Matthew chapter one. You see what the Bible says. Oh. <clears throat> I will read <clears throat> the second part of verse 20. For that <clears throat> which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse 21. And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For, listen, he shall save his people from their sin. Hallelujah! He was born to save. According to the Bible, there are many scriptures, we can read all of them, but let me tell you, according to the Bible, there is only one Savior. And that unique Savior is God Himself. Salvation is not in any church. Salvation is in Jesus Christ. And when you continue, oh my God. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which be interpreted is God with us. Hear the Bible is repeating Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. My precious brothers and sisters, listen. I'm standing in front of the elect of God. I truly believe it. I think the church should scream amen. Are you not an elect of God? My goodness. <laughs> the same precious brothers and sisters. Now, unto the elect of God here in Pandabek, I would like to give you today the words that will make each one of us, even myself, be sure that very soon we shall meet when we go back to John chapter 3, let us see it. John chapter 3. The Bible says, verse 3. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Jesus answered and said unto them, 
Verily, verily. Listen, without any doubt, for sure, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. Brothers and sisters, this is very important. Our new birth. Each one of us knows more or less when he was born, when he came from his mother. We have our birth. But in the Lord, we must also have our birth. Listen, brethren, this flesh cannot inherit the kingdom from above. We must be born again. Listen, the Bible says, now listen to this Nicodemus said unto me, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This is verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Remember, time has come for the true worshippers to worship God in truth and in spirit. We must be born as the Bible says, of the Spirit of God. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters. I want each one of us to understand something. This is very important. If you are not yet born again, you are in serious trouble. But uh, it is not difficult. It is not difficult. We shall read through the scriptures and see exactly what the Lord wants us to do and what He wants us to be. I will jump and then shall come back again here. Yeah? Listen. Verse 30. He must increase. But I must decrease. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, a true Christian is a very humble person. A true Christian is the one who gives unto our Lord Jesus Christ eh? the opportunity to do everything in him. We must become nothing and let Jesus Christ become everything. Until when you who was born sometimes in 1940 something or 1960 something you become nothing and then Jesus Christ becomes everything in you. That's not difficult. As we were mentioning at the beginning, the Lord Jesus Christ is here. Listen brothers, listen sisters. It depends also on our attitude. I'll give you a scenario. Let us assume 
the Prime Minister of Australia invites you in his office. When you are in his office, you are not going to behave anyhow. <coughs> you know, this is the office of the Prime Minister. I remember somewhere, someone was reminding the host, says, since you are entering this office, don't you, how do you call it, chew that finger? Yes. Because the boss will say, don't respect me. Hey, let me in the church of the living God, we must expect Jesus sitting somewhere. So when we come in his presence, we must have all respect. And I always, you know, praise sisters when they are correcting their children, when they see times are not finished. No? Because not a place to play. The Lord is sitting somewhere here. Do you know when I'm standing sharing the word of God? I know he's somewhere here listening to what I'm saying. I come to bring my own thoughts. No, it must be thus saith the Lord, which is found in the Bible. That's why you see sometimes people will go to their churches. Women dress in how? You see women with trousers in the church. Once it is written, when a woman wears the clothes which belong to a man, in front of God it is abomination. You know, abomination is like you make someone vomit. But you see women in trousers speaking in tongues. And I always tell everyone, those ones, that's not God speaking, it's demons speaking. God cannot contradict himself. Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. As we were reading, Time has come, and this is the time. We must worship Him in truth and in spirit. How can you be baptized with the Holy Spirit of God when the truth is not found in you? You mean God will come and confirm wrong doctrines? No! Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. Our God is not here to play church members. Oh, yes. I was about to, yes, I was trying to show you. He must increase, but I must decrease. When we go to the book of First Peter, yes, 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 yes. First Peter. Brethren, I would like to show to each one of us that this is very important. Without the new birth, we are in big trouble. First Peter chapter 1. If you have time, read everything.